Smash is a pressure game. Like any sport, esport, or competition that puts you in front of a live audience, like any activity that assigns stakes to every movement, Smash is a pressure game. The people who play the best under pressure are the ones who improve and climb up the rankings, whether those rankings are international, regional, local, or even pure GSP. Even if you're not a competitive player at all, you've probably felt the pressure in Smash once or twice before. You've probably choked under it before too. Well, don't worry. When it comes to competition, comebacks and chokes are totally natural. In this video, we're gonna go all over the mental game, how high-pressure scenarios shape your gameplay, and what you can do to overcome those nerves. If you're looking for tips straight from the masters of the mental game, be sure to head over to ProGuides.com. We have live coaching with competitive players and a course taught by the best in the world himself, MKLeo. The first thing you have to understand about Smash is it's a mental game at every level. As the level of skill goes up, the game only becomes more mental. But make no mistake, it's not a thinking game. In a thinking game like chess, games can stretch on for hours. In Smash, a game can be no longer than 8 minutes. Over the course of eight minutes and thousands of interactions, you don't have time to stop and think about all the things happening. You only have time to process relevant information and act based off of it. To get around this, your brain builds unconscious pathways that it can travel without stopping to think. For example, if you play certain characters, some of your kill confirms will become as natural as reactions as you level up. Fox mains will run up up smash directly after the neutral air hits and they won't think about it. An experienced hard at work Fox main has drilled this kill confirm into their brain. This kill confirm is like the drive to the grocery store or the walk to school. Your body simply does it and your mind can focus elsewhere, like on other cars on the road or people on the street. Pro players have, usually over the course of several years in multiple Smash games, built a massive network of tracks in their brain. If this happens, I do these inputs. If that happens, I do those inputs. The result is, their mind has the freedom to consider hundreds of new possibilities. And they build plays and counterplays most players can't replicate and that Sakurai could never have imagined. Pressure derails all of the tracks your brain built. It makes you question motions that were inherent. This is why even the most clutch Smash player on Earth, the Clutchbox himself, misses guaranteed rests in high-pressure moments. Hungrybox has reinforced every track that leads to a rest a thousand times over, but pressure can still make him consciously consider that track. And as soon as he thinks about the rest, instead of just doing it, the chance that he misses it skyrockets. The time to think isn't there. The execution window is too small. This is why we see the effect of pressure at every level. Casual or pro, we've all built tracks and muscle memory that pressure can destroy. This is the first reason why pressure is so disruptive. It throws off your groove. The second is that it introduces thoughts which disrupt your working memory. Working memory is to humans as what random access memory is to computers. It's a limited resource you use to focus and manage tasks. Your working memory is the thing you use to plan your day, schedule a doctor's appointment, or remember what the hell you came to the pantry for. When you introduce non-task related thoughts or thoughts your habits once covered, then it takes a toll on your working memory. So, for example, if you had a two-stock lead on your friend and suddenly they land a zero to death, you start to worry. What if I choke? This worry leads to visualizations, calls to action, and tons of little thoughts that all tax your working memory. In turn, as you get zero to death, you start to drop combos and air dodge late. Your brain briefly forgot these habits and now you're thinking about how to perform standard combos and confirm too. Suddenly your working memory depletes, you can't seem to think about your opponent's patterns, and you just want to reboot the system. But you can't. You're in the middle of a game. The third thing pressure does is disrupt your focus by putting you in a threat state. Psychologists call a positive reaction to pressure a challenge state. You see the tough situation as a challenge you can feasibly overcome. A negative reaction to pressure is a threat state. It happens when you don't feel you're equipped to handle the pressure, so your mind becomes anxious and unsteady. This situation is a threat, not a challenge. And that feeling of threat can even affect you physically. In the world of concentration, you want to have quiet eyes. No, your eyes aren't making any noise. It's a term for when your eyes are focused on the targets they need to be. It's how well you're keeping your eye on the ball. One scientific study measured quiet eye duration for different people going in for a golf swing. The people in threat state had a 22% drop in quiet eye duration. Basically, they took their eye off the ball 22% longer. When we talk about sports and esports with razor-thin timing margins, that 22% can mean everything. So we've talked about everything pressure can do and learned about quiet eyes and working memory. But how can we actually handle it? Well, for starters, understand that sometimes you just can't. Sometimes you lose. 
The first lesson against pressure is to stop fearing the L. You will take L's. It's the nature of every game. While you shouldn't just assume you're gonna lose since that'll put you in a threat state, you should be ready to accept losses. Against an equally skilled or better opponent, a loss is nothing to be ashamed of. Even against worse opponents, it's something that happens. One obvious way to reduce the pressure of the loss is to understand it happens. You can also carry that mentality into the individual moments of the set. Just as you will take L's, you'll also make mistakes and miss opportunities. By accepting that mistakes are part of the game, when you make a mistake, your brain won't immediately start questioning every habit. Sure, maybe in that one instance your timing was off and you dropped the combo. It doesn't mean you need to use all your working memory keeping your combos tight and totally lose sense of the flow of the match. For an interesting approach in handling mistakes, we can look to Michael Phelps, the Olympic swimmer. Phelps would actually visualize mistakes or disaster scenarios in his head and develop plans for them if they arose. By doing this, Phelps puts the burden of handling the mistake in long-term memory, which has much more space than working memory. This could easily be applied to Smash. What do I do if I'm down two stocks? What are some ways I could get quick kills? How could I trick my opponent into giving me those quick kills? Now let's move past accepting losses and into believing in the win. To believe in the win and get into that challenge state, we have to build confidence. To see your opponent as a challenge and not a threat, you've got to be confident in the fact that you can beat them. Part of your confidence in your skill can come from confidence and practice. If you're confident that you've practiced well, then you can feel confident in your skills. Michael Jordan got rid of his fear through practice. He says that once the game starts, he reverts back to the things that he practiced, things that seem to be very routine. Jordan trusts in the habits he's built and the tracks he's laid, and he doesn't question them. But well, once the game started, I am not nervous. Before the game, I could be nervous. I'm pretty much nervous at, at every game. But once the ball goes up for the jump ball, I think all that nervousness just kind of goes away and I revert back to things that I've practiced, things that seem to be very routine. And I'm very comfortable in, in that environment. If you need help making a good training routine, we've got a video for that too. But if you're still struggling with confidence, you can also use body language. Body language often shows how we feel, whether we're sad, happy, distant, friendly, confident, or nervous. But body language can actually change how we feel. Harvard psychologist Amy Cuddy ran an experiment where she had people adopt a confident or unconfident pose for a few minutes. She found that adopting confident poses increased willingness to take risks, increased testosterone levels, and lowered cortisol levels. To understand that better, testosterone is a chemical all people of any gender use, and it can be useful for building muscle, increasing energy, and elevating mood. Cortisol is the stress hormone that typically comes from feeling anxious and concerned. Both of these hormones are necessary for every human being, but the gist of this study is that the power poses help our brain feel more confident. Now, obviously, if you're just not confident or totally outmatched, standing like Superman won't change much. But standing or sitting in open and confident poses can get you dialed in. This is all just the science behind why players lean in and straighten up when they get serious. And why one of the GOATs, Armada, has insanely good posture. For the last part of this video, we have to cover fluid motion and the swing thought. In the world of golf, the most important thing is your swing. A good golf swing is fluid, easy, and powerful. Much like in the world of basketball, a good shot looks like one clean motion. That brings us back to all these games being mental, but not thinking games. Thinking only disrupts the practiced fluidity of these motions. So golfers use swing thoughts to steady themselves. This is something golfers hold in their mind to keep it from interrupting their flow. It could be a visualization of where they want the ball to land, or it could be a mantra or a saying. Helen Davis, a sports psychologist for rowing teams, uses a similar tool, trigger words. When the pain kicks in, they have trigger words that they've planned for in advance that they will say to themselves to get across the finish line. She has her rowers make trigger words to use in the final stretch when they're exhausted and sore as a way to clear the mind and refocus. Swing thoughts don't always work. To be honest, when it comes to pressure, there's nothing that's always gonna work. The pressure gets to and beats all of us every once in a while. What we've provided here is a roadmap for understanding how pressure works and some paths to handling pressure well. We hope it wasn't too much science! If you're looking for more super-specific Smash stuff, then you know where to go, ProGuides.com. If you've got a free moment, why don't you head over and check it out? No pressure, of course.